Naomi Campbell is runway royalty. As beautiful as she is controversial, this London native has been a muse to designers as well as a marketing magnet for brands across the world. More than a working model, Naomi is also a successful entrepreneur, magazine writer, and committed philanthropist. Naomi Campbell, on this episode of Leading Women. Naomi transcends her beauty, takes it to another level. Gangster warrior, buffalo soldier, beauty. She's a self-made cyclone of energy, style, and drama. <laughs> I grew up in Italy, Rome and Geneva, and then when I was five I had to go to school and went back to London. I've been to two theatre schools. I loved going to school, I looked forward to going to school every day. So it was so much fun and um, never knew it was going to happen. I was just hanging out with my girlfriends after school and in a place called Covent Garden, and then I got approached by a mod, she was an ex-model from Ford actually, called Beth that came up to me. She just said if I wanted to model and I said that I didn't think about, I hadn't thought about it. And um, I actually stepped aside because I thought she was talking to my girlfriend who had very long, beautiful blonde hair and she said, no you. And then I took the card, I went home, my mother said, absolutely not. And then that was that. And then I um, one day snuck out, went to school, but took my mother's clothes and went to a, a, a casting for Elle magazine and got the casting, then had to come back home and explain to my mother how I got the casting. And then my mother had to consent to let me travel at 15 years old. When I first saw Naomi, I just thought I knew that she was gonna be like a, a winning ticket. There was a lot of girls coming up around that time and she, you know, she's just a, she was a good looking kid. That's all I could say. She moved to this country at the age of 16 and that's one of the most impressive things that I've ever seen by herself getting her own apartment, fighting for herself, making sure other people didn't get paid more than her, if they did, calling them out, fighting with her agent, knowing. She was an amazing kid. I can't remember the first time I saw Naomi, but it was probably at an Yves Saint Laurent fashion show in Paris, or it was probably on the cover of British Vogue and when she was 16. When I started modeling, um, doing shows, the editorial girls didn't do the same as the girls on the runway. It's two different separate, two separate girls. And I think when I came into modeling, it changed. Every print girl is not necessarily a runway model, but Naomi had that ability to be that runway girl because she loves the runway. It's like your moment to sort of like perform. Johnny Versace, I think, was a, one of the people, and as Dina Laya, that was part of that change and using the magazine girls on the runway with the show girls. She could walk, she could model, like none of us could. I can't tell you how many times I took uh, lessons from Naomi, you know, of how to work the runway. Naomi has a great walk that people like because it's done with such confidence and it has a sort of swagger. She certainly is a never boring on the runway, ever. When I'm on the runway, I never really looked at anybody in the audience. I'm always looking straight ahead in the light. I think being adaptable is something my pro I've always had that type of personality. I wouldn't walk the same for Comedy Garçon and Helmut Lang as I would for Versace or Alaya. It's t it depends on the clothes that I'm wearing, and that's how I adapt to my walk. In modeling, you don't have your voice, but you can communicate an idea through your expressions, your body, um, and your movements. Naomi's mastered that. From the very beginning, she knew that she was valuable, and she made relationships with those who were also valuable and powerful. She picked her designers, she picked her photographers. I don't accept no's. I especially don't accept no's when it would be on the color of my skin, and I still don't accept no's when it's because of the color of my skin. She doesn't allow anyone to pigeonhole her. I didn't accept to be treated any differently. Um, I was very lucky because I had wonderful photographers like Herb Brits, Richard Avedon, Steve Mizell, who always said to me, you be you. I didn't want to hear that word racism and I didn't accept it. I believe, and I still believe, in finding a solution. When you do things that you want to do and you make people kind of bend to what you want them to do, you can achieve anything. You know, so like the, you know, her achievements of being first black model on the cover of Time magazine, first black model on the cover of W magazine, um, first black model on the cover of several Vogue magazines throughout the world. Those things wouldn't have happened if she wasn't driven. 
My mother was one of my mentors and always telling me I had to try 120% harder than a Caucasian model and I, or my counterpart, and I've always known that from my, the day I entered school. Then Beth Ann Hardison, who I've known since I was 16 years old when she flew to London to meet me. Well, she was involved in the Black Girls Coalition, which was um, an, an initiative that um, was created by Beth Ann Hardison. The Black Girls Coalition was a little idea I had. Um, to celebrate the black fashion model because there were so many working at the time. I did it sort of so they can come together, so they can celebrate this moment with me and I could celebrate them, but at the same time teach them about how powerful they were and then let women, young women, see how they can work together and change things. Ultimately, you know, that has, I think, resulted in people viewing um, women of color differently when it comes to casting shows and advertising and, and, and magazines. To this day, I will say I'm a working model because I cannot bear the terminology of supermodel. And they call so many girls supermodels these days and that's like, you know what, I don't want to be called that. I'm just a working model. I think it was a very important time to show that it was a different wave of the industry. It was no longer just simply a fashion model with no credibility. Now it was a fashion model with credibility that everyone knew her name. People said to me, who was the next Naomi Campbell? I said, there's never going to be another Naomi Campbell. Every image of Naomi is, is iconic in its own right. She puts so much energy and effort into a shot that when you see the end result, you can only appreciate it from that perspective. I still get excited by my work. It's not, doesn't take that much. <laughs> I mean, I still, you know, I'm still, as I said, I'm very ambitious. And right now the work has been amazing and I enjoy what I do. Naomi is always paying attention to new designers, new photographers, new stylists, new magazines, new creative outlets. I love working with young designers. I'm always looking to see who's coming and there's a bunch coming up now, Jonathan Saunders, Mario Schwab. I'll do anything for them. Stella McCartney, when she first started, I gathered all the girls to do her graduation show at St. Martin's. I mean, no one has a graduation show with Kate Moss, Yasmin LeBron and me. It's a graduation show, it's not her, you know. So I've supported a lot of designers when they didn't have a penny and couldn't afford to pay me, but I loved what they did creatively. And so I hung in there and believed in them. She has also been amused to some of the great designers. Mr. Saint also used her once in one of the great shows. And she's a great muse to Isnina Laya. When you see Naomi and Isnina Laya, you see true, true great fashion and true style. So the combination of his clothes on her body and uh, his designs on her just must make him feel like this is the, what I designed for. She is a great, great, great inspiration to photographers. I mean, Stephen Mizell chose Naomi to, for the cover of Italian Vogue, which has done an all black issue. I think anything that Naomi Campbell has done with Paolo Reversi and Peter Lindbergh, I think are significant for me. Those, those two photographers captures her in such a great way. I mean, it's just amazing that it's 21 years or 22 years later and she can get, still give it to you. Even if I known you for 22 years as a photographer, which is how long I've been working, when I'm off the set, I'm friends, we're friends, we go to dinner, whatever. But when I'm on the set with the photographer, even if I know you for 22 years, I'm not talking to you. I'm just focused on doing my work. I believe you have to draw a line between the two and keep it separate. Naomi has an ability to really inspire glamour. And glamour is a very important thing that has sort of like disappeared. And she's the last of what fashion really represents as a fashion model. Her mother was a star to a certain extent. Her mother was a great dancer and uh, had a sort of star quality and it rubbed off on Naomi. My mother was born in Jamaica and brought to England when she was three. Um, I mean, I don't know what it was like for them, but I mean, I love having and knowing that I have a culture in my family. Well, my grandmother always gave us chores and that's something I know that I in turn will make my children do. So like 
heaven to clean the stairs, wash the dishes on Saturdays. Everyone had a chore before they can go out and play. I think a lot of her, you know, her family upbringing helped to shape her for sure. I've never had a stage mother. She was not with me 24-7 because I had a baby brother. So she was with me when she can. And then when she couldn't travel, again, stepped in the angels. I seen Elijah, Johnny Versace. I was always very lucky to have these people in my life that not just looked at me as a model, but cared to take me into their fold and guide me. Quincy became my papa when I was like 22. And I met Quincy in Paris and I love him so much. He's a wonderful man, spiritually sound wonderful vibrations. There's not one person you can meet that doesn't love Quincy. And Mr. Mandela I met in 93. And Mr. Mandela is, he calls me his honorable granddaughter. I just am blessed to know him. He uh, embodies the idea of the true personal brand. Look at her with that uh, Sobe water ad for the Super Bowl. There she was uh, playing Michael Jackson. Because Naomi has incredible kind of, you know, um, stamina and strength and physicality and fitness and health, etc. She was a perfect candidate and I called her up literally. She gave me Quincy's number. Quincy was in an airport in London and Quincy connected me up quickly to Peter Lopez and Peter Lopez called Michael Jack. This all happened on Sunday morning within four hours. And by the next Sunday I was in LA rehearsing and I thought I was being punked because when they said you gotta learn the thriller dance, I was like, oh you gotta be joking. She worked her tail off to get those moves right, but it was complicated, especially when you put nine inch heels on that, right? I couldn't have been happier. Doing that, I love the lizards. No one really knew Sobe Life Order and it became the fastest growing after Super Bowl, it became the fastest growing beverage in America. You have to realize that was Naomi the creative director, Naomi the marketeer. Naomi, the art director, and Naomi, the powerhouse, the businesswoman. Now she's coming out with this new one where she's with Carlos Santana's music and on the beach and looking phenomenal and perfect and beautiful. She has a great style and a spirit, and she's very aspirational, and she represents a certain aspirational currency that is extraordinary. I love business. A lot of my friends say to me, and the business side of me, I'm like a man. And I'm like, okay, which is fine. <laughs> and on the sentimental side, I'm completely mush. Naomi's had a fragrance for the past, over 10 years. Um, in that 10 years, she's generated nine different fragrances that happen to be the best-selling fragrances throughout Europe. I'm on my ninth fragrance, and I've won lots of awards around the world but it never came out here. And I was like, I want it out here because I see everyone's got a fragrance now. It was very important for me to have my fragrance where African-American women, African women, women in South America can have my perfumes because these are my, these are my people. So I've made a protest that I want my perfume in these territories. Ultimately, I would like to see, because if you look in Duty Free, there is not one black person in Duty Free. In sunglasses, and in perfume. So there's still a lot of barriers to be broken. She has one of the most um, successful fragrances in Europe um, that's been going for over 10 years now. I do believe because of her involvement in lending her name to a fragrance, um, she has inspired other celebrities to, to do the same. Deluxe at Night, a new fragrance by Naomi Campbell. She's also um, a writer for British GQ. She wanted to interview world leaders as her initiative as a writer for British GQ. President Hugo Chavez, President Christina Kirchner, Lewis Hamilton. I will interview President Sarkozy, Prime Minister Berlusconi. I don't really sit and do an interview with them. It's more like a conversation. And because it's a conversation, they seem to be more relaxed. 
and it just flows. It's great because I get to do the research and um, I'm educating myself on lots of different things that I had no idea about than just the surface things that we all know. And she continues to seek out other great political figures. And it also helps the world to understand better where these people are coming from because I think, like most people in the public eye, most, they're somewhat misunderstood. This Fashion for Relief is something that we started here in New York and basically when you had Hurricane Katrina, because New Orleans was the first state of the United States that I ever stepped foot in for my first modeling job, which was for Elle. And I was also horrified to see African-American people walking the streets with nowhere to go. And I was like horrified, like everybody was. It can only happen if everyone collaborates together. So we did one in New York, which was great. We had Beyonce, we had Whitecliffe, we had Tyson Beckford, we had Veronica Webb and Pat Cleveland and Janice Dickinson. And Naomi can make anything happen. Within a matter of days, she pulled together like the largest group of celebrities, an incredible audience, and a lot of benefactors. Fashion doesn't discriminate, so this is this project that I didn't intend for it to be more than just one country, but and but now that I think about it, there's a disaster happening every day. So there's lots of places that can benefit from this, and I always felt that fashion was always like. Oh, what do they do? What do they do? They don't do anything. They're, they're so vain. So now this is our contribution. She has since gone on to take the franchise to London and she plans on going to other territories as well to help um, relieve territories when there are major catastrophes like floods throughout the world. And she's raised millions of dollars because of it. I love bringing people together. When Johnny Versace died, I took 72 people to South Africa and we did a show a tribute to Versace benefit in the Nelson Mandela Children's Fund. I try to take that seriously when I go there and do my part with the kids. It makes me feel that it was worth what we did and we have to do again to help others and that's what we're going to do. not a perfect specimen of a human being. I've done a lot of mistakes and I've had to live and learn my mistakes in front of the whole wide world. But the thing with me is I don't have a problem in apologizing and I don't have a problem of admitting because if I haven't, admitting your faults, recognizing that your faults is part of a growing process. You know, these situations where she loses her temper and all of that, you know, Naomi is extreme. Her love is extreme. She is a true diva. She is a true unique soul. I think she's misunderstood and a lot of that is due to her own shortcomings. She could obviously take time for herself and she doesn't. Naomi challenges herself. She's quite guilty of things that she does. But, but the genius of her is that she's, she's she balances it. I find that this world has become a little bit too involved in bringing someone down when they're already down. And I've always been told you should never bring someone down when they're already down. The world doesn't always get what they should get from her. And what they should get from her is the fact that this very intelligent woman, against all odds, has really raised the bar tremendously uh, on the awareness of the importance of fashion, style, design, politics, a cause, et cetera, et cetera. Naomi's a cat with 14 lives. Cat usually has nine. Naomi has been given an extra few. And no matter what she does, whatever happens, Naomi can restir her pot. I'm very straightforward, and I do tell it like it is. And life is too short. You listen to you, because we ultimately, we don't listen to ourselves half the time, and that's the problem, because we really do have half of the answers, you know? Naomi has had the ability to be able to actually stunned the industry by being a force. There's probably a handful of African-American models that you can say broke all barriers, transcended everything, and were just goddesses. She was part of that next wave 
that helped make us remember things. She added a layer of history with other people at that time period. You can't find a better model on the runway than Naomi Campbell, even today. I do think that she thinks she still should be able to walk the runway at the age of 50. Let's hope that she does. I pray morning, noon, and night, and I think one of my issues in my life was not being able to let go and trust that something else would carry me. And now that I'm starting to be able to know how to do that, my life has changed considerably. I have changed. My, I noticed that I've changed within myself. Again, it's not for the public, it's for me. I mean, I've had a wonderful life, and if it ended tomorrow, I can have no regrets. It's been amazing. Very lucky.